Jan Agafjortov. All right, Jan, uh, you got to explain Borussia Dortmund to me. They, they lose to Stuttgart <laughs> well, in Bundesliga. Well. They get hammered by Bayern Munich in Bundesliga. And now they're the first team through in Champions League out of the group of death. What is going on with Dortmund? How, how much time does he have? <laughs> <laughs> the, the last ma man who can explain that was Albert Einstein, and he died in the 50s. It's not possible <laughs> to understand Dortmund. Uh, but what you can say about Dortmund is that they, they wanted to have the trophy, they just had to beat Mainz, couldn't do it. Now they need to be the challenger trophy, can't do that anyway. Then they are struggling at home against Gladbach, 2 0 down, then they're winning 4 2 out and they go to San Siro. And what team is that? Brilliant! Winning there in a quite difficult group. Dortmund is flying in Champions League. They are discussing what is Dortmund really now? They used to be a club that had a lot of young talents, selling them for loads of money, buying new talents. They did that with Dembele, with Sancho, with Bellingham, with Haaland, and so on and so on. Now it's more a team. They have a full Krug. Uh, the core of the team is Royce, Chan, Hummels, and so on. But still, they're still producing it in Champions League. But uh, is it 10 points now after Leverkusen, who they played this weekend? Could be 13. Ale, not a lot of people picked Dortmund to advance in the Champions League. I believe you did. Aha. Uh -huh. What but did you see? You know my allegiances to Bundesliga. Well, mm, I was uh, hoping it was based in facts. Well, no, 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 no. It was based on... No room on, for that. Look, no. It was based on the fact that when Dortmund are at their best, and we don't really know what that best really looks like consistently, but when they get in a, in a position in which they can attack teams, they are exciting to watch. They're a team that actually has enough talent in the attack to create problems. And so the question then becomes, can they defend just enough to give themselves an opportunity and a platform from where they can attack, from where they can get on top of teams and they can have possession into the attacking half. The problem is that this doesn't happen all the time for Borussia Dortmund. I was so excited to see Borussia Dortmund play in the manner in which they did at Newcastle, which was a more pragmatic way of playing because the game called for it, where you're effective and efficient in front of goal and you're pragmatic in the way that you defend, you're organized, you're disciplined. If they were able to add that to what it's already a good attacking team, then you can see how this group could be a challenger for Bundesliga. Again, this doesn't happen all the time. In fact, I, I could not agree more with Jan in that you have no idea, no idea. And I, we cover this team on a weekly basis. We have no idea what version of Borussia Dortmund is going to show up. And it's one thing if we don't know, if Jan doesn't know. Edin Terzic doesn't know what version of his team is going to show up every week. And that has to be a scary thought going into a locker room. Speaking of showing up, you know who just showed up? Stuart Robson. There he is. Uh, Robbo <laughs> joining us from uh, Barcelona. Robbo, great to have you with us. How do you explain Borussia Dortmund and these wild inconsistencies that we see from league play to then the success in continental play? I think their major problem is that when the ball changes hands, and, and, and they've just said it in the studio, and Alejandro got it absolutely right, they are too easy to counterattack. They're too easy to, to go at. Uh, you've got Hummels, who's had a, some good games, you know, and people said he was man of the match uh, last week against uh, Milan. But he can't run anymore. And when balls are played down the side, he needs protection. And, and too many times he hasn't got that protection. Emre Jan in midfield and Sabitzer haven't been good enough when the balls, uh, when they've lost possession and they're counter-attacked. They've got fullbacks that love to get forward but don't get back defensively quite well enough. They've got front players that are not sure quite how to press the ball. So... They do have a good attacking threat. They do play some lovely football at times, but they're inconsistent with their defending. Even the very first game of the season against Cologne, who are right down at the bottom, they were still vulnerable to the counter-attack. And that's been the case in every game that I've seen Dortmund play so far this season. That's their biggest problem. All right, so there it is. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen, Borussia Dortmund, Sunday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time here on ESPN+. Plus. Let's take a look at who the guys are picking in this one. All right, so everybody except for Ale. Ale is the only one that is not picking Leverkusen to win. Shaka, you've got Leverkusen winning by the most, 3 0. Why do you see this as such a blowout? I just think Dortmund have struggled defensively all season long. And, and yes, there have been exceptions to that, particularly in Europe. But you, you look at, at Dortmund defensively, you don't, you're filled with absolutely no, no confidence. 
On the other side of that very same coin, Leverkusen um, have an attacking threat like nobody expected to see this season. They've been scoring goals, they've been exciting to watch. Xavi Alonso has them um, sitting top of the table, and deservedly so. What one draw in their 19 games in all competitions so far this season, that tells its own story. Um, and, and again, just kind of given those deficiencies that we've seen from, from Dortmund far too often, I, I see this as being comfortable mm. for, for Leverkusen. Mm. I feel like you just gave me a lot of reasons not to trust Dortmund, but you, more than anybody on this panel, is trusting them to at least get a point though, on the weekend. Because that is who Borussia Dortmund are as a team. See, everything points in the direction of Bayer Leverkusen going into this match. And I mean everything. You, you want identity? Leverkusen has it. Does Dortmund have identity? We don't know. Leverkusen can attack. Leverkusen can defend. Leverkusen has a midfield. They should be easily superior to Borussia Dortmund. Guess why? Both this is when Borussia Dortmund plays well. <laughs> this is when they get a result. When you don't yeah, expect, yeah. and, and I think it, this goes to the mentality of this group. When you don't expect a whole lot from Borussia Dortmund, they seem to thrive. When you start to believe, that's when things get, get a little scary for them. So, right now, I don't think you would expect Borussia Dortmund to get a result at, at Leverkusen. This is when they it's, go and get a result. Jan, you picked Leverkusen. I do. Uh, I think Leverkusen will be the main challenger, as, as they are at the moment. The only thing for them, we're coming up the Africa Cup, they will lose some players there. They can't plan how long they will be away, and so on and so on. The biggest challenge for Leverkusen, if I, I'm going to say that, is that Bayern now is using their old trick. When Werder Bremen challenged them, they took their best players. When Dortmund challenged them, they took their best players. When Leipzig took their, uh, challenged them, they took their coach and their captain at the same time. Bravo, what about you? You think Leverkusen can get it done this season, beat Bayern to the title? Uh, I don't think they're going to beat Bayern to the, uh, Bayern to the title, but uh, I think they're going to be close. Uh, we just heard how good they are going forward. They've got wing backs, and I know you like me to mention wing backs who are doing brilliantly at the moment. <laughs> wing back down one side, Grimaldo down the other. Uh, there's, they've got players who play in behind the main striker, Boniface, Inverts, and Hoffman, who are clever with their movement, clever on the ball. They're a good team at the moment. They're athletic, they're well organised, they've got a great manager, they can score goals. Do I think they win the title? No, I don't. I think they're going to come second, but it's going to be very close.